Alright, what we're going to be doing today is installing a generator interlock kit into a Square D panel. Uh, this kit is available from peer to peer services. Retail cost is uh, approximately $500 depending on the panel. The uh, particular kit we're putting in today is a 50 amp kit. So it comes with the, uh, <clears throat> the card tie for the power inlet, uh, card tie for the generator. It comes uh, with the interlock bracket. Now uh, the interlock bracket is just mounted into the panel and allows, it's got one spot to uh, for the main, it's got one spot for the generator. Now this only allows either the generator or the, excuse me, either the generator or the main to be uh, on at any given time so you do not back feed the power grid. Uh, our interlock kit comes with a disconnect, go ahead and pull the disconnect out. It's not a disconnect, a power inlet box. Now the power inlet box is mounted on the outside of the house. Now, once mounted, you just simply set the set the portable generator down. You plug the cord into the portable generator. You plug the cord into the power inlet box and manually transfer the system inside. Now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the uh, the interlock kit there mounted into the panel and uh, take some shots of it functioning and uh, after the wires are ran. Here you see Adam drilling the holes in the electrical panel in order to mount the generator interlock kit. Alignment of the generator interlock kit is done by separating the forward plate from the rear plate that comes in your kit. You place the rear plate on the panel. You ensure that everything is lined up square. You ensure that when you place the front plate on top of the rear plate on the panel that you can move the front plate up and down through its full motion and that nor the main breaker nor generator breaker <clears throat> is inhibited in its operation. Once you ensure all of this is in place you remove the front plate and pull the sticky tabs off of the back of the rear plate placing it back where you just had it on the panel. Once this is done and it's in a firm position, you take the panel outside to drill the pilot holes out. <clears throat> Please take this outside because as you can see, it does produce a lot of metal shavings. Once you have the holes drilled, you're going to be taking fasteners that come with the kit. You're going to put some Loctite thread sealant on it and you're going to install it to where the screws are facing towards the inside of the panel and cannot be undone from anyone on the user side of the panel. We've applied thread locker to the, the first of the fasteners. Installing the fastener now.
There it is, one functioning interlock. I'm going to go inside, shoot some video of the panel, show you the breakers that got to be moved around. Alright, as you can see, this panel already has breakers installed in all four positions at the top. We need these two top positions, it's going to be the generator feed, so that you can interlock. Now, in order to do that, we have <clears throat> some breakers that are, are, are tandem breakers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move these two lines down and what they call this is also called a piggyback breaker so that we can open these spots up once we get the spot open up we're going to go ahead and put a 50 amp input breaker that's just a standard square d uh, breaker we're going to go ahead and put that in and that's going to allow the generator feed to come into the panel and the interlock kit to function properly what we have here is a dewalt diamond impregnated coring bit we're going to drill a hole through the brick on the outside of the house to be able to run the generator feeder from the power inlet box inside to the panel distribution board. on generator power right now actually what a uh, ironic bit the the electricity went out just as we were fixing to tie in the the cable for this this interlock breaker right here now right now I do have the panel off and we are running on generator power in which the sticker is prohibiting us doing that but remember we are certified electricians and uh, as you can see the main breaker is off and uh, as soon as we get as soon as we get power back on from the power company, we're going to shut everything down. We're actually going to move this breaker to the top and this one to here so we're going to install the tie wrap, which is a safety strap around here. It keeps the, this breaker from popping out in the, uh, in the event somebody does take the panel off. But, you know, that shouldn't be an issue anyway because you're not supposed to run it on generator power with the panel cover removed. Now, one interesting fact is, right now we have a 4,000 watt, 4KW, uh, however you want to state that, generator tied into the house. Uh, we're pulling about a 12 amp load on that 4KW generator. Now that 12 amp load, we are running, we are running a free, uh, uh, upright uh, freezer refrigerator combination. We are running a 2 ton air conditioner. And we are running a chest freezer. I'm going to come over here and show you the generator. This is actually... Tie so we got the, we got the tiebreaker. We got the, the uh, power inlet installed. We got the... Uh, Everything's set up, and like I said, just as we were fixing to terminate the wire, the <coughs> power went out. Now this house is set up with two two-ton units. Right now, the the two-ton unit on the right is running. I don't have access to the gate; it is locked. But uh, it's we're, we're sustaining load on that two-ton unit with a four kW Coleman. right there we're at 13 to 14 amps all right we're back on power company now we've actually went ahead and, and rearranged these breakers like I said we now have the tie strap in there and this uh, this little tag here which basically says you know do not remove this strap 
Now the importance of this is with this strap on there, like I said earlier in the early video, this breaker will not come out whenever it's under power. So uh, everything's buttoned up in here. We're going to go ahead and put the panel back on and uh, show you how it transfers. Alright, we've got the panel cover installed. We went ahead and traced out all of the circuits in the house, verified what they were, properly laid them, labeled them as per the NEC. We've instructed the customer that in order to operate the generator breaker, you turn the main off, you slide this assembly down, turn this breaker on. This is your generator tieback. You turn off all these other breakers, you come back in after starting and connecting the generator, and you turn your 110 loads on all one by one. The generator that the customer has is big enough to run one of the centrals, so he's going to turn his centrals on and then manage them manually by the thermostats. And that is how you run a house on a portable generator.